So hello and welcome along to another edition of Isolation Interviews for Hospital Radio Reading and for my YouTube channel. And uh, I'm super excited to be joined by a very talented actor in the form of Jason Merrills. Thank you for joining me, Jason. How are you? I'm all right. Thank you. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Um, now, obviously, the last couple of years has been uh, tough for a lot of people. I mean, how have you found the ever-changing situation we find ourselves in? How has it affected you? How are things? Um, it's affected me like everyone, I think. It was incredibly strange and shocking when it first happened. Um, pandemic, I mean. Um, yeah, it was, you know, I was working on two jobs at the time. Um, I was working on a job called Finding Alice and, um, and a job that I've been doing for a few years called Agatha Raisin. Um, Finding Alice was sort of two or three months in and Agatha Raisin was just beginning. And we had a read through and then suddenly everything got pulled. Uh, Alice um, went on working for a while with very early doors protocols put in place about COVID and masks and everything but it soon became sort of untenable for them and they had to shut down as well. But they were one of the first ones to pick up again. So oddly, I did work a lot through that pandemic year off and on. Um, after the first lockdown, me and my friends, uh, Jamie Glover and John Kerrigan, uh, who worked together before over many years, we made a short film together. So one of the first things I did out of the traps of the first lockdown was our short film. Um, and then in September, I picked up again on Finding Alice for a bit and and then sort of locked down again until the following spring where we started Agatha. So um, it was odd, but I mean, actually, for family, I, w we became closer. We hunkered down like everyone did. And I think we sort of learned a few things about each other, which was a useful thing. Um, we spent a lot of quality time together. <laughs> Um, we um, became quite inventive with our time and what we did and um, you know there were some odd positives about it you know um, but yeah it was, it was, it's been incredibly strange and, and still is quite strange as we sort of navigate tentatively crawling out of it you know. I mean obviously yeah like you say you know people have had to adapt and change I mean did you find yourself doing anything different anything you don't normally do um, during the lockdowns kind of any new skills anything like that at all? Um, I don't know I did more of what I do I suppose so I'm quite um, I ran every day with my dog which was an absolute mental health and physical health lifesaver because um, I have a very bouncy energetic full-on Labrador and he needs a proper walk and so I decided that we would run together so we, we run sort of nearly just under five miles most days some days three miles but we do a run together every day and we've been doing that all through lockdown and past it and we both just love it and it's kind of like it sets you up for the day it sort of gets him sorted so that and then I can carry on doing what I need to do and um it also just sort of gets a little bit of fitness for me out of the way so that that's not sort of looming over whatever other tasks you have because time management is just such a thing, isn't it? And actually having more time as we all did in pandemic just made the focus of that, how you manage your time and what you do with it even more kind of poignant. So, um, yeah, and I, I do a lot around the house. I build stuff and I make stuff and I paint. Yeah, I just do a lot of my own work when I was at home. So pandemic meant more of that for me, which was nice, which was good. Um, yeah. I mean, the other great thing as well is I think it gave people a stronger, more, you know, loving feeling towards the NHS. And I mean, I mention it a lot on this show that obviously you know, the NHS have been amazing through the last couple of years. I mean, they've always been amazing. I mean, but what have your thoughts been of, of you know, the hard work they've been doing and, and, and how they are? Um, well, I mean, I'm in awe of, I, I just think that we, we have this thing in this country and we, there are a few things in this country that are world, of world renown and are envied across the world. Oh yeah, they're sniped at by certain sections of the world as well. 
but they are the envy of most countries because they are a beautiful and a brilliant idea. And I think the NHS is one of them. We should be so proud of what we did after the war, that in the wreckage of that terrible conflict, um, one of the greatest, most beautiful ideas ever arose, you know, and it still does work. Yes, it has problems. Yes, there are huge amounts of people in this country that it needs to minister to, and that is a bureaucratic nightmare, can be. But, you know, I believe that it is worth saving and that the way to save it is not to go down the road of splitting it into tiny little pieces that are privately owned, because I don't think that's what the NHS is. Um, and I think, you know, if you talk to any Americans about healthcare and the nightmare that they have, I mean, it's like $2,000 to get an ambulance in America, to call an ambulance. It's crazy. I mean, that could be here. And we don't want that to happen, I don't think, really, most of us. Um, so I think it's worth saving. And, and I think it, yeah, it has its problems, but um, my children have all been born through the NHS. Um, uh, my family have been sort of cared for by the NHS. And I just think it's an amazing resource. I mean, I've got friends that have, ha have had issues that they've gone to their local hospital and suddenly found themselves with the, the greatest surgeon in that field in the world because of the NHS. But if you were in another country where you had to pay for that kind of medical care, you would not get that standard. I mean, I think that's an extraordinary thing. So yes, it's worth preserving and I'm a big fan, yeah. Now, I wanted to go on to talk a bit about your time on Waterloo Road. I mean, just uh, before Christmas, I had Jamie Glover, who you mentioned on the show. What are your memories of that, of being a part of that show? Because it still lives on to this day. I mean, what are yeah, your memories yeah. from that? Uh, our memories are great. I mean, it was a wonderful, we made, we, we forged it, you know, together at the time. And it was, a, we all thought, what a great idea this was. We'd all, we were all the generation that watched Grange Hill and loved Grange Hill as kids, as teenagers. So we thought, well, this is great, because this is like, this is really like that. It's got some, it's got real salt and pepper to it, like that had. But also, you know, it's an evening show. It's a, it's a show not just for kids. Um, and I think that they did that thing. They knitted together that audience at eight o'clock in the evening, which had not quite been done before in that way. And it was a very, very clever move. And, and it was a really good move. And, and the story was great. How do you turn a school around? Um, how do you turn a really failing sink estate school around? What do you do? And within that, obviously, there were the relationships with the teachers and, and all of the stuff that you get in any good drama. But that essential story was really fascinating, especially to me and Jamie. We were really keen on that at the time when we started. Um, and so it was really, it was, it was a lovely time and me and Jamie are very close friends from that job. So, you know, and, and lots of other people there that, I, that, that I'm still friends with. And it's, it was a really special time. But what was amazing was that it had this rebirth on iPlayer or on YouTube. I think it was YouTube first and then iPlayer and, you know, this whole new generation that were the age of my middle daughter and younger started watching it. Um, and getting into it and sort of like revivifying it. And I, I suspect that had something to do with its current remount. I, I suspect, I don't know, who knows, but I mean, it was a great idea. Why not bring it back anyway? But um, yeah, I'm sure that had something to do with it. So I was very proud of that, that it still could touch a nerve because often, you know what kids are like, they, they look at something that's 10 years old and it's like, oh, it's, I don't wanna watch anything old, dad. I don't wanna watch anything like that. So it was really lovely to, to see that you know, lots of young people were responding to it, even though it wasn't of their time, you know? I mean, the other, I mean, let's say you say, you know, it had great storylines. It also, you know, an amazing cast. I mean, obviously yourself, Angela Griffin, uh, mm. Jamie Glover, uh, Jason Doan, uh, mm. you know, there's so many to name. Denise Welsh, yeah. obviously, um, Philip yeah. Martin Brown. I mean, to work with all these people, it must have felt like a family because you all seem to get on really well. Oh, we did. We had a great time and it was, it was, we had a lot of fun and, you know, all the best, I'm sure that you get this a lot when you speak to actors, but all the best kind of ensemble casts, you have to, you, actors become very good at making fast friends and sort of 
making the energy between everyone work very well. And, and, and one of the ways you do that is by having a laugh and messing around and not so much that you stop work happening, but enough that you create a glue between you that, you know, you can, you can work together quickly. And there's a sort of, there's a sixth sense of where the, the beats are to a scene or what the comedy is of a scene or where it should be going. And, and all of that is useful. And, but it's part and parcel of you really bonding and becoming close. And we certainly did that. And I mean, also, I was only there for two and a half series, as well, Jamie, I think. And, um, and after that, I mean, so many great actors went on to do stuff in the schools that I didn't necessarily work with, but looked back at and thought, oh, that's great. That's, that's good. They're doing it. So there were you know, lots of really good actors in it. Yeah. But it was, it was a wonderful time. Yeah. I mean, do you miss playing Jack? Would you ever want to revisit that character again? <laughs> I loved playing Jack. I really enjoy it. When I first was asked to do it, uh, well, asked to read for it, I think, I can't remember now, but I think I was. Um, I, um, I, I looked at it and I thought, wow, I'm really happy that you're seeing me for this because usually I was being seen, I was being seen at the time for a, a lot of sort of bland, leading man-y sort of stuff. Um, not all of it was bland, but it was all very, of of a type and and I saw this and I thought wow this is something that a real character actor could play uh, but they asked me to read through it so I was very happy about that because it was a bit of a sort of sideways sort of um, quite extreme character quite a volatile character um, quite different to me in some ways quite similar to me in, in some ways but not not a way that I'd ever been seen on screen or ever been viewed as an actor so I was really I jumped at it actually and I, and I was all over it I wanted to do it so much so uh yeah I was very happy um and I love that character. I love him because he's so flawed he's such a sort of kind of barn door and a kind of bulldog but he's got such a great he had such a great heart and really wanted to do the right thing even if he didn't know how to do it um and I just thought he had a really great sort of feeling for the kids and and they for him you know, he reminded me of a lot of sort of quite strong, tough, but fair teachers that I had at school, you know. So I, I liked him a lot. And yeah, yeah, if it was right, I mean, who knows? Yeah. I mean, I say all, all we know so far about the latest series is that obviously Angela Griffin is going back and it looks like I yeah, believe I she's going to be idea. head teacher. Yeah, I was going to say, what yeah. do you think of that as, as, as the show goes on? Idea. She was, uh, I think, uh, I think um, when we did it, she was head of pastoral care um, and she was the sort of heart of the teaching staff and, and I think it's a fantastic idea that she comes back as the head so she should you know if not the governor of education or something you know I mean it's like yeah no she should be and she's a great actress and she's got a great quality um, I think that's a really good decision actually and it links it links the past and the future in a in a in a nice way so yeah no all for it and and i think that you know the thing about it is this new i mean i wasn't part of it when it moved to scotland and now it's coming back so i don't know how they navigate that or what the story is there but it obviously whatever the story is they've got to re-establish it it's not going to be the same building because i don't even think that building exists anymore um that we used to film in in kirkstall so uh, it's got to reimagine itself and it's got to replace itself in the modern idiom with the modern problems of teenagers now. Um, so, it, um, you know, it's great. Now, I mean, the other project, of course, that, um, that you know, you were a part of for a number of years was, of course, Emmerdale. I mean, how did that come about for you? Was that quite an interesting sort of role to take on and, and, a, and a show to be a part of? Yeah, it was. It was... Um, it was, it was not something I was looking for, but it was also something that um, I, uh, I knew various people from Emmerdale because I ran at the time on a uh, charity running team for leukemia and lymphoma research. And a lot of the guys that I ran with on various half marathons and marathons were um, from Emmerdale. So I knew them and I knew the sort of vibe there and, I, and it sort of appealed to me out of all the three of the soaps there was something about it that seemed more it was more of a broad spectrum of a, sh of a drama it seemed to me um, you know it had the village and you had various different things and you could do 
little pockets of story here or there and then you had the big house and all of that it seemed it had more scope to in it to a certain extent um so i you know i i kind of had a feeling about it being an okay gig if you know what i mean and then and then i was in one of those situations which hits every actor at some point in their career where nothing was happening really nothing was happening and i was looking at my um you know table with no food on it and uh i got a call from gavin who was the producer at the time and through my agent and he said listen i want you to come here and we'll 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 sort of work on a character and event basically i want you to sort of take over the big house and let's talk about what kind of character this guy is this new guy declan that we're thinking of bringing in and i just thought i was also uh, i was about to have um, my youngest child um, my missus was and i just thought well actually this is a no-brainer you know th this is a really nice offer from this quite genuine guy and and uh, it seems like a really nice place to work and it and it was and i'm glad i did it but I mean, um yeah oh i was gonna say i mean how much involvement did you get in the kind of development of the character and kind of discussing where it was going to go um well i was <laughs> in details i was always involved yeah i mean i would always get the scripts and have a talk and have a chat and put my oar in and i had a few ideas that were that were in um and early doors yeah we me and gavin spoke a lot about um who he was and where he came from i mean they had the idea for him that wasn't from me i mean they knew who they wanted to bring in and what he was called and the vague idea of where he was coming from and how he came in through a kind of scam from charity um, they had that, but yeah, there were lots of details that we discussed and I brought some stuff to the table, but it was, it just felt open. It felt like a dialogue and it, it was, um, it was a surprising and really creative experience. And it was also, it was at the time when the crash, the crash, um, hit the economy when 2008, 2009, but it hit the entertainment business about 2010 um 9 10 and into 11 and literally you wouldn't have seen this most punters wouldn't have seen this but if you were on the working side of things it was very clear that a fraction of what was being made in previous years was being made those years so the field of jobs was much much smaller um and there just wasn't a lot happening and i knew lots of actors that gave up the business completely because they couldn't survive so i i got through that in in emmerdale and and i'm glad i did and i worked every day as an actor which is you know is in itself an achievement sometimes um so but it also in a great environment with some absolutely brilliant actors that i loved working with and some stories that i really enjoyed doing um you know i mean there is the six shows a week thing which uh, i'm not a massive fan of in terms of uh any kind of story but within that there were times where there were arcs of story rising for me that you know i felt were just really great and 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 some really good stuff to get stuck into you know i mean do you remember the first time you actually stepped foot in the village and and was that weird for you i mean i, I mean i had you sort of seen it on on the tv before i mean and yeah, yeah. what was that like for you to kind of be there and like oh this, yeah, this it was looks... really, really weird my nan used to give us tea after school and she was a massive emmerdale fan back in the emmerdale farm days with the guy with the big sideburns like that what was the name amos so i was very, yeah it was very weird it was very weird to land there and be in this program that my nan used to watch um yeah yeah but it was fun and it was i mean that was that's a real lifesaver as well because you know it's in the studio of any soap or any multi-camera drama it's fast and it's relentless and you have to grab what rehearsal you can uh, and it's full on but as soon as you go on location to the village it slows down to single camera drama pace which is you know not on um, you know it's not dissimilar to any other drama that you you know you, it's the same kind of setup because you're using dollars you're using a single camera so there's a, a kind of respite to it and um, and relief to it and i'm not sure how many other soaps have that built in you know so that was nice going to the village was always the my favorite bit of it yeah 
And obviously your time during your time on Emmerdale, did you sort of learn anything about yourself as an actor that, that you'd maybe never really sort of experienced or was it, was there any kind of learning curves for you doing that show? Yeah, I, I learned, I learned how to learn dialogue really fast. <laughs> um, not speeches, but if a couple of pages of dialogue, yep, yep, got it, go. <laughs> um, I learned that. I learned not to take my phone on set ever again because there are too many bloopers now of me walking across Emmerdale and my, <laughs> my motorcycle ringtone <laughs> screaming from my pocket. So yeah, I learned that. Um, no, I learned a lot of things. I learned about um, just, th y there is stuff to be learned from the speed that you have to work in that kind of environment and the quick thinking that you have to do and the fleetness of foot in your thoughts that you, that you have to do. Just like sometimes on a movie, there's something to be gained from the slowness of that pace and how much focus you have to put into a tiny detail. By the same token, there's also something to be gained from speed sometimes. Um, and also I learned how professional and diligent and as accomplished and as good as anyone else in any spectrum of the business, many of the people that work there were, you know, and often there's a kind of snobbery about soaps in that respect. And it's just not true. And I saw some oh, just really fantastic acting from other people, you know, weekly and, you know, very just just real professional work from everyone, you know. Now, I also wanted to very briefly talk about Finding Alice, which was a, a show that I, I loved and I binged through. Um, I think it was the second lockdown. It was fantastic. I mean, for you to work on a show like that with such amazing cast, I mean, Keely Hawes, Joanna Lumley, yeah. um, you know, Nigel Havers, people like that, that, that must have been kind of like gold dust. That must have been an ama like an amazing show to be a part of. Yeah, it was. It was. I mean, it was, you know, I was the dead guy. So <laughs> I was... Uh... <laughs> It was, it was a funny gig, but I was very happy to do it. It fitted in at the time, as I said at the beginning of the pandemic, it fitted in. It, it seemed like it was going to fit in before I was beginning this large, long-running series of Agatha Raisin. So I thought, why not do it? It's Keely Gores, it's a great script. I really like the script, and it's an interesting little idea. And they were very keen to say, look, you know, you, you can approach this kind of thing both ways. You can have a photograph on the mantelpiece of the dead husband or you can have real proper scenes of flashback where there's a real sort of work going on between uh, whoever he is and, and Keely Hawes. And, and it seemed that was the way forward to make her grief, or to help, because she's amazing, to help make her grief uh, poignant and real, was to make that relationship, even in flashback, as real as they could. So, you know, I was, keen to do that and help with that and and be a part of that but yeah it was quite it was meant to be quite a small thing but then the pandemic hit and it became sort of quite broken down my involvement with it and then I was back on it so it was I was on it for longer than I thought I would be um but yeah no, I loved it it was a great team um Roger Goldby the director I'd worked with before who's who's fantastic and um yeah it was great I mean, going into a project like that, do you know kind of at the beginning that the whole outcome of how it's going to end or do they keep, do they sort of drip feed it to you? Yes. Well, I knew, I mean, obviously I knew I was dead and I knew that there was a limit to what was going to be seen from my point of view. I didn't know where, I didn't know where uh, Keely was going to end up or, or how that panned out in terms of what the legacy that Harry had left behind and the mess he'd left behind. No, I didn't know all that. Yeah. And I mean, just obviously going forward, I mean, what, what are you looking forward to going forward? What, what projects can you tell us about? What, what is it that, that you're sort of, you know, are there any sort of dreams or things that you're, you're wanting to do going forward? Yeah, there's a lot of writing bubbling. We, um, we formed a, um, uh, uh, a sort of fledgling production company, me, Jamie and John, and we made our short film, which is doing really well around the world on the festival circuit at the moment. It's been in Hollywood shorts and now it's been at Leeds Festival, which is BAFTA qualifying. And it's going off to one in Denver, I think, next. But it's going all over the world. So we're waiting to see how that does. That Short films have a year's journey of kind of trying to build up as much traction as they can. In the meantime, we're working on a couple of other projects together. 
that we're trying to get into development. One's a kind of possible TV pilot, and one's another feature film. So I'm working on that a lot. I'm doing my own work. Uh, in terms of acting, um, I've got, um, uh, I'm, I'm going to be a part of the uh, Happy Valley 3 series, which I'm absolutely over the moon about. So uh, I can't say a lot about it, but I'm just, I'm just very, very happy to be part of it. It was something that I watched. I watched the first season of, I was blown away by it. Um, I've worked with Sarah and Shiv before in Clocking Off, and I know they're fantastic. Um, but I, I really love the conceit of the show and the way it's, I love the way it's threaded one story through as well as being a kind of weekly procedural drama as well. Um, I think it's excellent. Uh, so I'm, and I think the writing is fantastic from Sally Wainwright. So I'm really happy to be a part of it. Uh, that's coming up in the next few weeks. So it's a busy time ahead. Now, I just want to yeah. say it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for giving up your time. Um, but That's before right. we go, is there any messages you'd like to give to anyone who's currently in hospital at the moment, um, not having the best of times? Anything you'd like to say to them at all? Oh, take care. Um, get some rest. Um, and I wish you all the best. You're in the best hands. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Jason. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Of course, keep safe and you're welcome back anytime. Cheers. Thanks a lot. <laughs>